Well, hi there. I'm Casey. And I'm Corey. And we are the Wright Brothers. I'd like to welcome you to our August podcast. And this being August, as you know, this is one of my favorite times of the year. It's middle of summer. Uh, the weather is beautiful. The beaches are great. The golf courses are green. And perhaps most importantly, it's fantasy football time. <laughs> very, very important. Uh, very important time of year. So you got your draft board all filled out? I do have my draft board filled out. And... I know the next question, and the answer is no, I'm not going to tell you who my number one pick is. I don't even care who your number one pick is. I know who it is. It's the Damian Tomlinson. It might be. Anyways, uh, we do a lot of presentations, as you guys know. Most of you have probably actually met us at a presentation, uh, whether it be at your office or your board. And one of the most common questions that we always get after our presentations is, uh, where did you guys learn to present? And more importantly, how did you learn to build that PowerPoint presentation, one that really seems to work? No, and it's interesting. I mean, the first answer is probably a very long, meandering answer. But the second one is, is something we can answer pretty quickly, and that's what we'll devote the entirety of this podcast to. And that's how to design technical presentations to really enhance uh, what, you're, what you're talking about. And I think that that sort of speaks to an interesting point, which is that if you see a lot of PowerPoint presentations, and most of us in the business world, in the real estate world, we've seen quite a few, um, you know that a lot of times PowerPoint presentations or any technical presentation has the tendency to really get in the way of what's being said. It sort of hinders the connection and the rapport that you're trying to build with the audience. And so we're going to talk about how you can really build a presentation that enhances what you're talking about and gets away from that sort of distracting um, you know, presentation that we see a lot of times. Absolutely. Well, we've got a lot of great information, so let's dive in. All right, now, probably the largest problem that we see with most PowerPoint presentations is that people try and use them as a source of information rather than what they're really meant to be, what, what they're really meant for. And that's why they tend to be getting in the way, because they're trying to put so much stuff onto the slides and so much information onto the slides to really make it as an information resource rather than a visual resource. Exactly. No, and, and really what you want to think of um, a PowerPoint presentation is it is your visual aid. So you should never have the same text that you're saying up on your presentation, which is that I think is the cardinal sin of presenting, and you see it so many times with PowerPoint, is that people will literally just put point by point on their PowerPoint what they're talking about, and it's almost as if they're reading their PowerPoint presentation, and I think to some extent they are. But I have to say, at that point, from an audience perspective, why are you there? Just send me the PowerPoint presentation. I don't need you there if you've got everything written down. So um, really think about it. It's more about designing visually. Now to do this, you'll need a couple tools. The first thing is you're really going to need um, to start thinking about getting images because images are what's really going to improve the look and feel and design of your presentation. I think the best way to do this is a tool I found called yodophoto.com and we'll list this link at the end here of the podcast. But yodophoto is essentially it's a stock photography um, search engine and you can go there and people upload their own photos and you can search for your own and you can get hundreds of free, or actually thousands of free photos uh, and you just search for the term, whatever you're looking for, and it'll pull up just hundreds of photos, and you can just drop those into your presentation. Get really slick, professional-looking photos to visually match the point that you're making audibly with your presentation. Now, a few kind of technical things that you might want to consider when you're building a PowerPoint presentation is, first of all, the margins. And I notice that the margins are often set very wide. Yeah, I think this is just one of those sort of peculiarities um, any typographist will tell you when you're looking at the default settings in PowerPoint. They're just set too wide, and it's just sort of a... Distracting. One of the, I just make a general rule: just bring them in about a quarter inch to a half inch before you start, uh, and, and you'll get a lot better look and feel out of that. Now, the next thing would be the rule of threes, which is try and group everything in groups of threes or less. So, when you're talking about main points, when you're talking about bullet points, when you're talking about uh, maybe main ideas, try and group them into threes or sometimes twos will be more appropriate if you're talking about an either or. But uh, the group of three, uh, putting things in groups of three or less, is always a rule that you want to keep in. Uh, in mind when building a PowerPoint presentation that will really help to hone in on those points. Absolutely. And, and that's really just an issue of digestion. I mean, um, psychologists have figured out that people are literally not able to take in more than three to four pieces of information uh, on one slide. So uh, if you start designing more than three or four bullet points on a slide, you're literally just designing for nobody. Nobody's getting that information. And then the last thing would be uh, talking about not using sentences in your slides. And uh, really the only time that you would ever want to use complete sentences in your slides rather than just kind of uh, general ideas would be for quotes and statistics are just about the only times that you ever want to do that. So avoid using complete sentences in most of your slides, um, whether you're dealing with bullet points, headers, or main points. Right, and again, that goes back to that point of you want your presentation, your visual presentation to be different from what you're actually saying. And one way to keep you honest with that is just put general ideas and concepts, broad ideas, no complete sentences. Perfect. So that's how you can visually start to build uh, a PowerPoint presentation that enhances your presentation rather than gets in the way. 
Now I want to kind of dive into some technical ways to start to build your PowerPoint presentation. All right, now another way, thing that you want to consider when you're giving your PowerPoint presentation is make sure all the technical aspects have been handled ahead of time of your presentation. I mean, how many times have we gone into a presentation, we see a speaker gets up there and uh, they, can't, they don't know how to work their own clicker or uh, the audio or video doesn't work or maybe you can't hear them if you're standing in the back of the room. And these are things that all could have been handled ahead of time just by taking care of some of the very simple technical aspects. Now the first one, one where we see a lot of problems is from the audio and video end of things. So what would be your suggestions here? Well, my first suggestion would be just think long and hard about whether or not you want to use audio or video. I mean, it is sort of a decision you can make. I personally believe that audio and video is very important. It's something that you want to put into a presentation whenever you can because it injects a lot of life and energy into it. But that said, I understand that anytime I'm doing that, it really is a bit of a gamble. It may not work. It is the hardest thing to coordinate and every site you go to, you know, broadcast their audio and their video a little differently. So what I would say is first of all, just think about it. If you do come to the conclusion like me that it's worthwhile, I would say this, um, do a dry run. It's absolutely imperative that you do a dry run if you're using audio and video content in your presentation. Perfect. Now another area that we see a lot of uh, mistakes on the, the end of presenters is on the equipment side of things, which can also be handled ahead of time. Um, so try and get as much of your own equipment as possible. Now most people have their own laptop that they bring to a presentation, but if you can, and depending on the reg regularity that you present, you might want to consider getting your own projector, or your own monitor, your own clicker, things like that. Yeah, no, and this really just speaks to how often you're presenting. I mean, if you're only presenting every once in a while, a projector may not make that much sense. They're a lot of money. But at the very least, I'd say everybody out there should buy a clicker. I mean, a clicker, for less than 100 bucks, you can get your own clicker that you know how to use, feels very comfortable to you, you make sure it has batteries all the time, and, and that solves almost about 50 to 60% of the technical issues you see in presentation. But that would say are really uh, oftentimes solved by the, or, uh, the clicker problems. You know, you can't go forward, you can't get back, they don't know the range on it, something to that effect. Right. Uh, and the, another thing to consider, which is very important with presenting, is make sure that your computer is ready to give a presentation. Yeah, no, this is interesting. We've seen a lot of uh, presenters fall victim to this, even very experienced ones. But, um, you know, there's a couple things you want to do just to make sure that your computer is ready. Um, first thing is you want to turn off um, the wireless uh, part, your wireless uh, connection, because you don't want it popping up asking if you want to connect to a wireless network. Uh, the second thing is you'd want to knock off anything like your wireless up or your automatic updates or your virus updates or anything like that that, again, would elicit a pop-up window in the middle of your presentation. And then the last thing is um, you want to get sure, make sure your power settings are all taken care of. So, you know, a lot of times you'll leave your computer for 30, 45 minutes before you present. You don't want it to get the screen saver going or knock into hibernate, hibernation mode. So make sure that you, you take care of your power settings too. Perfect. And then the last thing to always consider is always have a plan B. Uh, no matter how, mu how prepared you are, how much of your own equipment you're using, how much you think you've got it all nailed and everything's going to go right, it doesn't always go perfect and there's sometimes when you just can't give your PowerPoint presentation due to one reason or another. So always be prepared to give your entire presentation without ever needing a PowerPoint. Make sure you print out your notes ahead of time. Maybe you might want, want some handouts if there's some things. And more importantly, make sure that you design your PowerPoint presentation visually so that that PowerPoint presentation is simply enhancing it rather than a necessity for the entire presentation. That way if you ever do get in a bind where you can't use to your actual presentation, uh, that you'll still be able to give uh, a very informative and very uh, coherent presentation uh, on your own just through what you're saying. So those are some of the things that you definitely want to consider both in designing your PowerPoint presentation and then also making sure that it's ready to give uh, to, for you to present it without too many hitches. Now keep those things in mind and you guys will be given uh, professional PowerPoint presentations uh, for the rest of your life. All right, well with that let's take a look at this month's content. Uh, the first publication you'll be receiving this month is a publication geared to help you save money on gas. And it's kind of a cool piece. I know a lot of those publications you read just say something like, drive less, you know, like they're not really helpful tips. <laughs> but this one actually has some helpful tips, like, you know, about idling your car and which days of the week to fill up. So some cool tips. And then we will be uh, doing your newsletter in the second week, have some cool articles on uh, some home improvements to get your house ready for the market, uh, organizing your wardrobe, become a great host to any party, some things like that, some great articles. And then uh, the third publication we will have is an NHL guide, uh, sort of a preseason guide to what to expect this season. And then we will be wrapping it up as always with the market summary. So uh, that's what you have to look forward to in August. Uh, I'd love to thank you as always for watching our podcast. We hope you had as much fun watching it as we did making it. Um, have a great month. If you guys need anything, always feel free to contact us.